<sighs> Where do I start with this one? Uh, the Exorcist be uh, Believer is the latest Exorcist movie, and the latest movie directed by, what was the name again? Oh yeah, David, uh, David Gordon Green, the, the guy who brought us the, uh, the recent Halloween trilogy, which could have sounded good, but unfortunately we know how the other, how the last two Halloween movies ended up. Alright, I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself. Let me start it, start up with my stance with the Exorcist franchise. I, I when I was little, I've been hearing a lot about the Exorcist. I've seen clips about the Exorcist. Of the funnily enough. My first exposure to The Exorcist was actually a commercial on TV, but it's not for The Exorcist. It's for this spoof movie called Repossess. That's how I introduced to the, to, to, to the world of The Exorcist. But still, a lot of people over the years begin to tell me that it's one of the scariest movies of all time. and. It's still highly regarded as one of the best movies uh, and, uh, there is, one of the scariest movies. Um, I was getting a little bit, uh, getting that hype, uh, uh, at least on my mind. Until one day when I was, when I turned, uh, what was it, 12 years old, 12 years old or 11 years old? I finally got the chance to rent it on a blockbuster and watch it with my with, with my aunt who she told me stories about that she went to see the uh, see the, story, uh, the movie at the movie theater and how much it traumatized people especially her considering because she has uh, she, she's a little bit too sensitive on, on religious subjects I'm not gonna go too much into detail with that out of respect to her but the point is is that what uh, that VHS movie? It became the first time I watched the movie, and it probably also became kind of like the probably the last time I watched the movie because I saw it once and I thought it was enough. Even though I had some, I did say that the movie was good. It didn't scare me like a lot of people did. Probably, I maybe I blame it over the overheightness that this movie had, but still, but still, even to this day, I I give high regards to the movie and cinematography, the impact that it that it had, and so on. I didn't even see the the sequels, although I did hear uh, a lot of talk about uh, that. The sequels, well, they're not as good as the original. They have kind of like their own interesting, uh, interest. Uh, how can I say, interesting feedbacks. The second one, let's say that while it is highly regarded as one of the worst movies ever, uh, some defenders claim to say that while it is bad, it has a kind of like a very, very interesting cinematography. And the third movie, it has this guy as known as the Gemini Killer. Uh, grant, granted, this is only hearsay of, of, of from what I hear from other people. I never saw those two movies. Uh, but I did saw that prequel. Uh, what was it? The Exorcist Begin in the beginning of Exorcist Beginning. And many people call it garbage. And and my stance is, well, I forgot about it. I, you, you can tell, you can tell how much I didn't care for the franchise enough to, you know, saw the prequel and just forget it. I even kind of forget that I just saw uh, that uh, uh, how, how it goes. I just, I just kind of disappear out of my mind, except when, uh, except when I get reminded of it. And basically, the Exorcist franchise kind of just sleep, uh, sleep uh, uh, into obscurity, except for the first movie, until when they mention some of the greatest movies ever. 
Oh yeah, I oh yeah, just also I didn't read the books. I'm I'm not familiar with that. But I will say that while I was growing up, there were other movies that 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 has kind of like the same formula about exorcism. And uh, somebody gets possessed by uh, somebody gets possessed by demons and. And honestly, the, alongside Demon Children, uh, exorcism movies, uh, they uh, they also became a little bit kind of like my least favorite um, uh, subgenre for horror. And it came out for so, uh, so many reasons. First of all, is technically the same thing over and over and over again, and. It, it, the formula gets kind of like stale, and it, 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 but but you know what? This is can this can be forgiven because I I am open minded even to to repet repetitiveness to repetitive motion because well a formula has to you have to follow kind of like like a recipe in a cooking book. Uh, although yeah, sometimes you get some spices out of it. And the second reason is that I. I, I do consider myself an agnostic uh, so much that when I see about exorcism and, and they trying to shoehorn in a religious uh, kind of like a religious message here and there, while I get what they were trying to uh, to do, it it uh, I I felt like the uh, the the whole thing is kind of like hard to swallow in one in a way to another. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry for my mullet. Uh, mullet. The, 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 what I'm getting at is that w when people get possessed, it, it, I, it, it comes to me hard to swallow to believe that there might be demons trying to possess uh, someone. Uh, uh, although there are exceptions, by the way, there are exceptions that I could that I could buy uh, demonic possession. And not necessarily has to do with exorcism. I mean, I mean, there's the there's the Evil Dead movies, and also I played Shin Megami Tensei, in which it had demonic possessions. And and, and speaking of which, uh, this year I saw uh, I saw Evil Dead Rises, and we and we seen demonic possession, and I bought it, and it was it, it was it was a fairly entertaining movie. Uh, but some. The, the thing is that when they try to connect, you know, demon possession with, uh, with uh, kind of like a, relig a religious act, in, in, in which basically I think they kind of still do in real life, it's kind of hard for me to swallow if I want to link it a little bit to real life. Considering that I am a little bit kind of like in, in a scientific mind sometimes, I... I tend to believe that when people begin to act like that, um, I don't, I don't, I don't exactly believe that the person is possessed by a demon. I, I tend to believe that they, they are, they, they have kind of like a mental schizophrenia that make make them act like that. And I think it was scientifically proven. I do remember that there were uh, that before uh, over the years when they were kind of like religiously more religiously sensitive i even hear in the news like for example these guys are were possessed by the devil and they, they call exorcists or something like that and and i usually like to question out uh, question things and i and, and i was like you know what maybe Maybe it's not exactly demonic possession, but probably it is. It is a case of mental health, and and well, since people tend to be superstitious or religiously sensitive, they kind of come up with that uh, uh, with with that conclusion. It, uh, so and honestly, I I it did, that didn't help that I did saw some other. Uh, exorcist movies that I couldn't take it seriously, or it didn't, or it didn't, uh, it didn't scare me. There is, there was like the haunting on Connecticut that I didn't like. On, um, I don't remember the name of that of of that movie, but it was, 
yeah, I don't exactly remember the title of the movie, but it it, it was the movie that had uh, well, uh, what was the Michael Pe Michael Peña as a, a, a as a priest. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, that didn't work at all for me. Uh, so, so honestly, it is it, it's, it's kind of like a select as a selective choice um, uh, when it's about exorcist movies. Uh, and now we got this one, The Exorcist Believer. Uh, again, directed by what was the name again? I, oh, sorry, I have to see it. Again. David David Gordon Green uh, with Bloomhouse, and they decided to make a uh, direct. Uh, just like Halloween, a direct sequel to the original. To the original, that movie's trailer came out also out of nowhere. It just came out this year, and honestly, I wasn't exactly one hundred percent invested into it, uh, considering my my experience on 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 The Exorcist. I still respect the first movie. I still give it a lot of respect to the point that, yeah, it could affect a lot of people, and it's still, it's still I can say that, uh, well, I will say that some of the effects are now dated. You can tell that there's ambition out of it, and the mood and the whole thing, it still works up to this day, and so uh, it's one of those movies that if you want to scare someone, don't show, don't show this, no, don't show any clips. Don't show any anything to anyone. Like for example, if you have a kind of like a younger brother or sister, and they're not exposed to this movie, this is the perfect time to show them this movie to be highly effective. Because if it happens like me that I was exposed to some, even some of the spoiled things that that of the movie, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have any effect. So. Uh, so that's that's a little bit of my tidbit. And going back to the one that came out today, because I am always a curious guy, and I decided to watch it. The same week I saw 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 X, and I gave Saw X a, 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 a kind of like a positive review. In this case, I can't. The Exorcist Believer is probably one of the dullest movies I have seen. And it makes some really bad mistakes. It's one of those in which it starts out competent, but then it falls down. It becomes sillier and sillier and sillier that I couldn't even take it seriously seriously and they were trying granted it's not as bad as as halloween ends or or for that matter halloween kills because at least those movies they're bad in a baffling way to the point that that, that you could even talk about it and make an interesting discussions about this this one i can't I can't say that it was good, and it's a shame because it has some interesting elements that I can, that I'll, I'll it's, I won't praise it. I'm just saying that I'm gonna give it a pat on the back and saying that well, you try. So let's just start it. So the movie. Starts with uh, starts with with this prologue about this guy and his pregnant wife, in Hi in Haiti. Unfortunately, an the earthquake an earthquake strikes and and and, and the wife get gets affected to the point that the doctor had had the difficult choice to either save the wife or save the baby. And then we didn't get to see the choice, but it becomes obvious that he chose the child. He chose the child, and well, now he is a widower, living with with her uh, with with her with his daughter. He's a photographer and all that stuff. And then 
the daughter apparently she had get the keen interested on um on seeing her mother uh, seeing her mother even though she never met her she it, she decides to 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 go to 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 do this kind of uh what was it say a small science with uh, with one of one of her classmates and then the the the, the girls disappear they they go missing for three uh, for like three days, there, there was even a manhunt, a, po a wanted poster. There was worry about it until until again three days later they find they find them in the barn. Uh, they, they had they find no sustainable injuries. Uh, everything seemed fine. That is until these girls they begin to exhibit erratic behavior. Uh, erratic behavior to the point that it well it becomes kind of like demonic. So, uh, so, so basically, when the girl begins to act demonic, the doctors don't know what to do. The parents doesn't know what to do. Our main, our main father, uh, yeah, played by Leslie Allen Jr. He is, he, he he's like having his his crisis of faith because he's a skeptic, and and basically it turns into the typical exorcist movie in which they try to find a way to 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 free these children from uh from demons from the, from what i told you the solid part comes at least uh on the first um, what was it 15 or 20 minutes uh the pro the prologue with the earthquake as well as the missing children it really kind of feels like a, like a, like it's it's another movie it doesn't it doesn't generally it doesn't generally feel like an exorcist movie. But okay, granted, it's kind of like it's kind of like settling the mood, and it was shot kind of like decent, uh, a little bit decently. But once the girls are found, and then the demon demonic things kind of like happens, this is where it kind of becomes a sil gradually sillier when when the girl begins to exhibit uh, demonic uh, uh, the demonic. Uh, uh, the demonic, uh, well, how can I say the, the demonic aftermath? Uh, they begin to, uh, they begin to sleepwalk, uh, appear from one place to another. And seriously, there's a there's a moment in which I swear she kind of tele uh, teleport. They flicker the lights. Uh, they begin to rip off their knee, their, their fingernails, their toenails. Uh, they begin to scream. Uh, one of them even kind of makes a scene on 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 church um, and they be, and you know they show kind of the typical exorcist in, uh, injuries you know uh, cuts in the uh, having their cuts on their heads and they they begin to insult god and uh, and all these things that you see typically on the exorcist nothing exactly major but and considering my my uh, my different takes on the ex on Exorcist movies, I begin to see them gradually getting sillier and sillier and sillier, and not taking it to kind of like too seriously, and which is a shame because the actors are doing their very best on um, uh, making us believe uh, what's going on. Uh, at least uh, give it credit to Leslie Arm Jr. As, because he really shows that he is a grieving father that. He lost his wife on a tragedy, and you know he had to keep up with it with the daughter that he loved so much, and then and then tragedy happens, and of course uh, it also is tragic because it, it these things are happening to children, and I and apparently they wanted to to up the uh, uh, they wanted to increase uh, what was uh, what was the term the, the stakes. They wanted to increase the stakes because normally in possession movies, you it's one person who gets possessed. But in this case, we got two. We got two girls who are being possessed. And which, uh, but the, what baffles me is that they begin to claim, they kind of begin to treat it like it is one demon. And, but when it is two people being possessed, Technically, you're not dealing with one. You're 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 mostly dealing with two, which I'll get to a bigger problem with that, and, uh, and I'll get to that. 
Yeah, that. And 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 yeah, the, the I would say that in characterization, the characters are not exact. They got kind of like too many char uh, too many characters, and they're not exactly kind of like well developed, except for the Leslie Adam Jr. character and the daughter. But then we got the other family who they're just kind of like religious evangelists. Sometimes they kind of like bicker, but still love the daughter, and now they have kind of like this uh, this problem and i'm kind of grateful that they don't went over the top with with that family because either well it was gonna turn into well for lack of the better terms a white trash family and and thankfully it didn't go that far just like the halloween the halloween franchise did the new ones that i'm that I, what i meant and again thank goodness that they didn't went overboard with uh, with that and out of the blue, they also wanted to showcase like uh, that there are pe people with different religious backgrounds, but it doesn't help. It doesn't help that that it doesn't help that the movie is so focused on 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 trying to make a story, but they don't sit on the theme that it wanted to do, and um the. Uh, and that that kind of feel like some character were just kind of like just there. And speaking of which, here is also one of the biggest problems that this movie have, and I'll be a little bit brief to that because that one deserves a little bit of a talk about it. They brought Ellen Burstyn into the movie. You don't know who that is? She was the original actress who played the mother in the original film. She am um, boy that they wasted her. They waste this character insultingly. I don't know which is more disgraceful to have a uh, a legacy character return only to only to get uh only to be useless, just like they did in 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 the last Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, or this, in which they waste the character just like they did in that one, but this time they brought the original voice, the original actress. She played the same role as the mother, and and here's the thing. She basically ha had a fallout with her daughter, you know, the daughter who played was played by Linda Blair, in which she also makes a cameo. I'll leave it at that. And apparently, she wrote a book. She wrote a book about her experiences. And 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 apparently, our main protagonist it goes to her for help. Why would you go to her? She's not an exorcist. She's basically just a woman who had a terrible experience. And the both of this movie by saying that, uh, that yeah, she didn't, uh, she didn't, uh, she didn't uh, basically witness the exorcist because there were, because it was made by two priests and apparently she blames patriarchy, uh, the patriarchy. Woman. It's not because of patriarchy. Uh, let's let's uh, let's put it on focus. Let's put, for example, saying that exorcisms are real. Exorcism can be traumatizing to watch, and also it can be very dangerous to uh, to uh, to onlookers. So the priests had to do their job and, and to keep her out of harm. It has nothing to do with patriarchy. But what the uh, what what is wrong with you, movie? That is all I have to uh, that is all I have to say about at least that part. And let me uh, jump into the cinematography because, as okay the cinematography is, there are some moments in which it gets annoying. There were a few times in which it wants to jump scare you. I think it was t twice, two or three times that it wanted to do, and they were pretty lame. Uh, one of them is that they wanted to make, you know, the loud house, uh, you know, uh, that, that loud house, uh, uh, noise. 
in which you have two characters walking, talking silently, and then uh, kind of like a demonic, uh, kind of here's kind of like a half a second of a demonic, uh, demonic montage with loud out uh, music and loud out noise, and go like, ah! uh, well, it's like ah! something like that. Please, uh, this is getting old. And speaking of jump scare, there is even a lame one in which in which our protagonist kind of finds the door, uh, the, his house uh, uh, with the door open, and then he enters, and then he finds kind of like a woman on his daughter's on his daughter's room, and then this guy who kind of looks like a little bit like a like a budget Wayne Knightley, he's like, hey, uh, I just came here to help you, and he's like, and the guy is like, how the how the frick did you get into my house? Get out! <laughs> And yeah, then we got, of course, the climax, in which you can tell that the climax, they wanted to put a little, the special effects, and well, they're not as, they're not as ambitious as the ori original. Uh, there are some that they were okay, but you can tell that they wanted to imitate some of the, some of the things that the original did. And yeah, they, they even have the, uh, they even have the line, uh, the line that, but the power of Christ compels you. They said that at least once. Oh my. So, and yeah, the pacing is very, it's very slow and boring. Um, at least I'll give it credit that that that, that, that well as uh, as bad as this movie is, at least I was. Uh, Kinda of somewhat entertained with the with the climax, but mostly it's just me trying to be to uh, to be desperate on trying to find a source of entertainment. I mean, trust trust. Uh, believe me, it was so boring that when they mentioned the Chris McNeil character, you, you know, the mother character, I was like, I was like, you know what? I don't remember the I, I don't remember details of the first movie. So in the middle of the movie, I just. I just went into the smartphone and tried to watch the uh, watch the uh, the trivia, saying that oh, oh yeah, it, it's the same actress. That's how much how boring this movie is and how how uninteresting I have. But there's a lot to talk about and there's a lot of disappointment that I do have. But you know what? I am. I think this movie kind of deserves a possessed spoiler because man that I do want to talk a little bit about that ending and also the Chris McNeil character played by Ellen Burstyn because this character they they brought her up because she wrote a book like I said before she wrote a book, and apparently, apparently that's good enough for uh, for people to say, "Hey, I need you to help me with an exorcist." And the, I don't know why the woman was kind of like helpful. It was and she, when she easily could have said, "What do you want me to do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I, I'm just a witness, a victim. I'm not. I'm no exorcist." And of course, that they brought her to one of the possessed child. And and the possessed child uh, in her demonic thing, she's she's like, uh, she's like, oh, I remember you. And, and by the way, this also bugs me. How how the hell do you know that is the same demon? Uh, I think that uh, what was it the first uh, the, in the first movie it was supposed to be Pazuzu, but how can you, but there were no indications, zero indications uh, that the girls are possessed by the same demon. And again, you're not dealing with one, you're dealing with two. And two, you can't have a demon split into two personalities into one. This probably ha it has to be two demons. And, and, and how can you tell that it's the same one that possesses the Linda Blair character? It's, it's, it's kind of like cosmologically impossible. So, and basically, She's like trying to, she's like, 
she's basically just trying to come to, into turn with that demon. And the demonic girl then grabs a metal cru uh, a metal crucifix and stabs her eyes out. And then she's out of the movie. She's she goes to the hospital. They only use her for some shots, and she's technically having the, the, a bandage with the eyes. She's practically blind. Um, and 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 nothing. She does. She does nothing more except that at the end of the movie she gets reunited with Linda Blair. And, and but still, what was the point of that character? You could easily take her out, and and nothing will change. You made the movie worse. I will have accepted more of this movie if if, if you didn't want if if you made yourself kind of like a standalone Exorcist movie. Because again, I'm not exactly I unlike many people. I'm not exactly against reboots or remakes or re uh, or anything like or anything like that. You, or for example, I'm not exact. I'm not exactly against, you know, the reboot of Tiny Toon Adventures or Animaniacs, what they did. People kind of like turn complaining that, oh, leave it alone and all that stuff. But I don't mind kind of like new adventure with the old cast or something like that or a new continuation. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. But try to make it right. It's not easy, but in this case, you could have dodged a bullet. And, and, uh, you could have touched a bullet on, uh, by making making this kind of like an exorcist movie that doesn't have to do anything with the other movies. Um, uh, but instead, she just decided to hire Ellen Burstyn, and and this completely topples the whole thing. And yeah, we got of course the the, uh, the moment in which they finally say that well now it's time to ask for the church to. Uh, to help us, uh, the priest at first is like, I can't. You know that, uh, you know that these things usually both signs they end up dead. In my eyes, it was like, well, well, the the priest technically just bail out because he doesn't want to die. So he gives it to this other character who is this who is the nurse who you know, she has a little bit of a backstory that she wanted to be a nun, but unfortunately she broke vows. Uh, uh, vows because she she had an abortion. Uh, yeah, they wanted to go that 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 way, and and then we got uh, of course everyone everyone gathered. The, the girls are tied up. There was also this I think Jamaica uh, Jamaican priest who tried this Caribbean or African uh, kind kind of exorcism. And then, of course, we got, you know, the typical, you know, the girls, ah, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to go too much into details. And apparently they also began to open the can of worms that they opened before. Like, the demon technically taunts the girls, uh, taunts the, the protagonist by saying that they can only save one of the girls. They can't, uh, they can't save them both. One of them has to die. Which is basically similar to the theme about... Uh, with the father, in which he had to make the hard choice of, of saving his wife or the daughter. Also, the demon kind of comes up with a, with a lame twist by saying that you never wanted your daughter. You just uh, you just wanted your uh, your wife. And the guy is like, and uh, we see a flashlight saying, "Hey, save my wife." It never explains exactly how how how. Uh, how scientifically it, it it come up with the other way around, but it it kind of brush it off like almost like no consequence, and that and you miss kind of like an opportunity to make a a, a very thematic uh, a, a, a very thematic uh, theme. I was not thematic theme, a very interesting theme. Because I've seen things like that. I read Blackjack, and there was these mo these hard choices in which, uh, in which uh, the child might die, and and you must kill it in order to save the mother. It have I understand they they have those hard choices, but they kind of brush it off, and it did it didn't feel kind of like important. Oh yeah, also the priest technically have a change of heart. He comes back, but. Apparently they find him useless because they twist his head and, and kill him. Uh, uh, so what was that redemption arc about? So the, 
Uh, so, of course, then the girl begins to act, uh, uh, you know, erratic, you know, like the demon begins to, you know, vomit all these stuff and begins to scream until one of them is like, I took, I took that, I took, I took my daughter, uh, the, the father of the, well, lack of better words, the white girl. But apparently, I don't know why, but according to one, from what I hear from one reviewer, it's because our the, the the daughter of their main protagonist she was blessed at the beginning of the movie and the and the other one wasn't baptized the demon is like aha aha got you there so the uh, so we uh, so we get uh, we get the daughter of the main protagonist survive while the other girl we see a small scene of her being dragged to hell and she dies Honestly, if you know me, this this will have been kind of like a moment where I will give my I will give a little bit of my respects to the movie. And I understand um, nobody likes to see children die, and I not me either. But still, I kind of. I kind of have a little bit of a mentality of Samo Tezuka that life is unfair to anyone with uh, either with life or death or something like that. And I'm kind of glad that it didn't take exactly the easy route. The easy route could have been that both girls survive. But in this case, they, they, they kind of took a kind of like a bold, a bold decision to kill off at least one of them. Although I think it will have been an extra bold moment in which if if the if the other girl died, the the, the daughter of the main protagonist, because that will have have come up as kind of like a more tragic ending for our protagonist. Uh, it's it's basically kind of like a big can of worms that is kind of like debatable, but still I can understand if people kind of get upset by this one, and yeah. They begin to say that well, life goes on. The girl is fine. Uh, the girl is fine. And she's uh, everyone is doing another job. The the, uh, the parents of the deceased daughter they have to move on. Uh, uh, the the father uh, the father visits the grave of his of his uh, deceased wife. Uh, the daughter she's doing her normal life, but she's kind of sad that she lost her friend. And the movie ends again with the re with the reunion of Chris Mc uh, of Ellen uh, Chris McNeil with Reagan McNeil, uh, you know, uh, the reunion of Ellen Burstyn with Linda Blair. And then the movie ends, and you know what? With that, my spoilers end. So in the end, that was a very underwhelming movie. The Exorcist Believer. Oh, yeah. I totally believe that was a lame movie. Really, really lame. It's not, although it's not as hateful as Dre's. I still hate that movie with, uh, with, with, with all my might, but I can, I will say that this is probably one of the worst movies I have seen this year for the sheer, for the sheer audacity that they, uh, they that it, it became a little bit too full of itself that, that it, it wanted to it wanted to mimic the success of the exorcist and basically just didn't get it didn't get exactly what made it successful and and the sheer audacity of course of taking legacy character and just waste it is is it is it's kind of like insulting um i i can't i can't rank it uh uh, uh, which is worse of all the Exorcist movies because again I haven't seen the second one I haven't seen the third one and I barely remember the beginning uh, but comparing it to the first movie it's really really subpar and I can't believe that I've been hearing that there are contracts for uh, for other sequels of this movie and, and, and with the hands of the guy who gave us Halloween ends and Halloween kills Please, 
Someone exercise this director to, so he can become a better director. 